Good afternoon to you. Mark Sutter, HurricaneTrack.com here with your Hurricane Outlook and Discussion for Monday, October 29th, 2018. You know what? It was exactly six years ago today, and it was on a Monday, that Hurricane Sandy made landfall in the New Jersey region um, with tremendous devastation. We all remember that. Six years ago already, my, how things have changed in my world since that time, the technology that we use. Sandy was the end of using laptops and digitizers and large batteries to power, literally, the camera systems. It was after that year that we began developing the Wi-Fi based camera systems using off-the-shelf technology and we really propelled it forward and now six years later look at what we have done and Sandy was a real launch point for that. I was tired of lugging those huge boxes everywhere where you had to have a very heavy battery, a laptop, it was Windows based, you were using Windows Media Encoder or Flash through Ustream and it was just very cumbersome and uh, pixelated and it's just amazing in just six years how far we have come and that was you know today October 29th 2012 I remember it well so what's happening out there now anything like that no and it's interesting to note too that a similar situation exists in the Atlantic that we saw even further back in time and that would be 1991 and that we had Hurricane Grace sitting out here and it was entrained in a large extratropical system and it all pinwheeled back very close to the New England coast up here in what became known as the Halloween storm or of course as the Sebastian Younger book uh, but more importantly I guess in history um, was who was it oh, I can't remember the guy's name was it was it Bob Case up at uh, Boston I don't remember the guy's name, you can tell me in the comments, that coined the term, it's the perfect storm. It was the meteorologist uh, up in Boston, I do believe, that coined that phrase, and it became a book, and of course a big time movie, and it entrained a tropical system down in the subtropics, not too far from where Oscar is. Uh, maybe on Halloween on Wednesday, I'll pull up some of those old satellite pictures, and we can revisit that, sort of a trip back in time but we do have Hurricane Oscar and that's adding to what is now an above average season uh, pretty much on every metric alright so the forecasts early on in the first part of the season were for below average activity generally speaking by most of the agencies certainly Colorado State University was calling for a below average season tropical storm risk uh, and so if we look at the ACE points, the ACE score, accumulated cyclone energy is sitting at around 124 points. That's above the long-term average. We're at 15 named storms. Oscar here makes the eighth, name, uh, eighth hurricane. And of course we had two major hurricanes. And there's some argument to be made that Helene, way out here earlier in September, was a major hurricane at some point that can be looked at there were no observations except satellite so maybe we'll get that bumped up and we will have had three major hurricanes and that's Saffir Simpson scale you know Florence made landfall as a category one of course it was a major hurricane several times in its lifespan out here but it made landfall as a one and I believe there's enough evidence to support that uh, Florence made landfall as a two on the Saffir Simpson scale and that Michael made landfall as a Category 5. I believe that strongly. The aircraft data, the recon surface observations support it. There is catastrophic wind damage that matches the Saffir Simpson scale description for Category 5 perfectly. And I think if you just looked at the damage and didn't tell an engineer, a structural engineer, um, you know, anybody what the precursor was, if they had no background knowledge and you said what category hurricane did this they would say well this is category five you know so there you go uh, interesting two mega seasons in a row and yet we didn't have a hyperactive season so remember that when we hear about an average season or a below average season or whatever you don't have to have a season like 05 where there's 28 named storms to have the catastrophes 
that we had this year. So what's happening with Oscar? Well, the good news, it's not going to bother anybody. It may end up coming close to the British Isles, uh, but we'll see. That's several days down the road. I'll show you the GFS in just a moment. Uh, sitting out over the open Atlantic, just adding to the A score for the year. And, you know, it might still send some swells. Let's just look at the uh, three-day track. That'll help zoom it in a little bit. Might see some swells generated as it gets stronger and, and turns northeast. And those swells could come out towards Bermuda. And maybe some of them will work their way south. I mean, there has to be. The hurricane is sitting out in the ocean generating swells. So you folks in Puerto Rico, the U.S. British Virgin Islands, and some of the northern islands of the Caribbean there, be on the lookout for that. I'll look that up. We'll see what we can expect in the days to come. Uh, but it's going to probably strengthen to a Category 2, and you never know. Maybe, as we look at it on satellite, it's not real organized now. But once these things turn north, we've seen them strengthen quite a bit. I mean, Michael did that, obviously, up here. But that's a different story. But even the ones out here in the subtropics, oftentimes we see them turn north and they get with the flow, so to speak, and they can crank up. So, you know, everything seems to have overachieved at some point this year, uh, starting with Brett back in July. So why not? Maybe Oscar here will become a 115-mile-per-hour hurricane at some point and be our third um, explicit Category 3 hurricane. I still think Helene has a shot in postseason analysis, but we'll see. We'll see how that turns out. So let's go back here because I want to show you what's happening in the eastern Pacific. I thought it was dead. It's getting close. Only yellow showing up, thank goodness. And that means low potential. And, you know, they're both away from land. Medium over the next five days, low potential in the 48 hours. But nothing threatening land here. We've been pretty lucky uh, in Mexico with all the activity that we have had in the Pacific this year. And, I mean, just look at this. Uh, what well, let's go to here. Tropical cyclone advisories. I mean, wow. Uh, all the way down to Willa. Almost ran out of names. Almost ran out of names. How about that in the eastern Pacific? So the satellite picture here from Tropical Tidbits. This is our region in the Pacific that's kind of unsettled, but it's getting kind of late. We're getting some strong westerly winds, lower pressures coming down in the mid part of the atmosphere. Heights are falling. Westerlies are coming in. And the hurricane season is about to be shut for the foreseeable future until next year. And uh, we're going to start looking at that in the next few weeks, especially as we get into and through November. What is that? That's next year. We'll take a look when, you know, we're getting there. Got to have something to talk about in the off season. Uh, hard to see, but this is the northern part of the Philippines where Josh Morgerman is currently located, tracking uh, typhoon U2, or how do you say that? Is it just Y-U-T-U, so you call it U2, or is it U2, like you try to say the Y, E-U-2, whatever. Uh, there it is. It's coming in after devastating the Saipan area. The Northern Marianas is a Category 5 super typhoon. Um, just incredible video that came out of there. Now a big rainmaker uh, for the northern part of the Philippines here. Josh Morgerman is on site. And uh, this should impact, I would think, in the daytime. i got to get my, it's going to be close. I mean, it is uh, 1.49 p.m. Eastern Time. And so, let's see, it's uh, 16.30 UTC. That's hard to say. I don't know. Uh, it's probably still dark out there, big time, right? That's all the way halfway around the world. I know my geography, but I don't know my time zones and where it's daytime and where it's nighttime. Uh, hopefully, for Josh's sake, it'll be during the day. I mean, it's got to be coming up on uh, sunrise there soon, and the core is still several hours offshore. So if you're not following Josh on Twitter, he posts pretty good updates there. Check that out. All right, so looking at some big sort of puzzle piece features that I like to check out during the season, especially the early part, uh, as we try to see what the stage is like. The stage is set, so to speak. Well, what is that? What's the dressing of the stage? If you know, uh, you know, playwright stuff and producing plays or making movies, you dress the set, and the set sets the tone for what the play or the movie is going to be like. And in this case, we look at the Atlantic, and sea surface temperatures are a big part of the global stage in terms of what we have for available energy 
and eventually when something does develop what it can tap into and how much above or below the long-term average that energy source is and in this case of course we're talking about sea surface temperatures and you notice that we do have this burgeoning El Nino signature along and just a little bit north and south of the equatorial Pacific through here cooler because of all the hurricane activity I would suppose uh, up here in the northeast Pacific between Hawaii and Mexico and then you notice the Atlantic is not doing too shabby uh, the you know main development region is you don't see any deep blues at all it's, it's right you know right around normal slightly above normal depending on you know how the trades are doing and this is something we can watch in the off season what catches my eye is how warm the Gulf of Mexico still is relative to average and the Northwest Atlantic over here close to the US and south of the Maritimes way above normal and that'll probably persist something to look at you know I think we have been in this pattern for at least the last four years ever since 2013 and that sort of weird year where everything just seemed to be in a funk it seems to have rebounded and the AMO trying to hang on the Atlantic multi-decadal oscillation that's the warm period of the North Atlantic usually lasting 20 30 40 years it just depends and every year since 2013 it seems we want to cancel it and say well it's dead we're out of the active era and then it warms up again you know maybe not in the classic sense that we saw in like 04 05 for example um, and you know even in in recent years like 2010 that was a very very busy year 2012 was fairly busy right when we got down to Sandy and maybe there was more I can't remember but uh, it's staying warm and we need to look at this and see are we in sort of a sub period of the AMO where we're having this warmth shift to the subtropics and therefore the intensities of the hurricanes are going to be high in the subtropics I mean Michael achieving what is in my opinion a category 5 intensity at you know 30 degrees north latitude that's incredible and so we need to watch this over the coming years not that we can do anything about it but it would be kind of nice to know you know exactly what's happening so we will be tracking sea surface temperature trends the anomalies departures from normal uh, in the off season to come and yeah I do that in the off season so here is the subsurface version of this all right and we're actually looking at roughly this area out here and it's a slice through the ocean if you will like an MRI or a CAT scan would be and so you see it's all warm there's just one little island of cool in an ocean well there's another one there so there's two uh, in this giant area of subsurface positive anomaly you know and so that means El Nino basically and this recently updated you know so that's only a couple of days old now a few days old uh, this gets updated a couple of times every few weeks whatever and it's a nice snapshot to see I call it the future you know because usually what's over on the west side of the Pacific ends up over on the east side and you get this circulation going on uh, and you notice that you know not much reinforcements over here I won't put too much into it yet it is only October and El Nino usually peaks around Christmas and into January of the following year but we're definitely headed towards the El Nino but here's the thing it did not manifest itself during the Atlantic hurricane season and I think that led to a lot of what we saw and now it's coming on in a more traditional sense where we see it peak in the northern hemisphere winter and that will have a lot of implications and we will talk about that as well um, I'm gonna get Eric Webb you remember him from way back uh, in the early part of the season uh, Weber weather Eric Webb uh, and maybe even Michael Ventress we can bring them on and say hey let's talk in so sometime soon via Skype lots of things planned for the off season coming up actual sea surface temperatures well finally we're dropping the shelf water to below 26 degrees Celsius which is good that doesn't mean that if huge if we were to get a hurricane to develop and it came up into the region that you couldn't still have some significant impacts up here you know you remember Hurricane Kate 1985 it can still happen but it's really hard to do what is going to be interesting is to see 
how much this warm water dwindles over the winter. Do we get deep penetrating Arctic air or what we call cold air advection moving over the Gulf? You know, you know we're going to have a couple of those intrusions, but how many, how deep, how deep into the Gulf, into the Caribbean, do we push these Arctic fronts coming up through the winter? And how much storminess and mixing will we see? Uh, we'll just have to wait and see, right? But right now, you know, if you want to go down to the Gulf, your best bet for uh, enjoying the warmth would be southwest Florida, southeast Florida, and then right up here, actually where Michael came in, still about 25 Celsius, so it's, you know, 78, 79 degrees Fahrenheit. And uh, <clears throat> other than that, you're going to need a wetsuit. And the same can be said here for my area in the East Coast region, mid-Atlantic states. The Gulf Stream shows up nicely here, 27 Celsius, but you've got this gradient how to, I love to see the, the gradients. They're, they're neat because you'll see how steep it becomes. The temperature gradient, the difference in temperature over distance, and this will become very steep because we're going to have probably a very active winter with lots of cold air intrusions coming off the continent, and that will push. Uh, it won't really push the Gulf Stream, but it'll push this shelf water to the point where you'll see the resolution is just not high enough, and it's just going to look like a black line all through here uh, later in the winter time where it's you know probably 38 degrees Fahrenheit right off Wrightsville Beach after a high of 89 in July yeah I bet it goes down to the upper 30s low 40s and then you got the Gulf Stream just 20 40 miles offshore quite a steep gradient coming for the winter time that's my prediction uh, but here too yes you can still get some rogue hurricane if it were to come up the coast but then you've got really cold water so I doubt it's going to happen. The pattern's not there. We're in the westerly re wind regime. Anything that develops is going to be like Oscar and probably stay well out to sea. So you know, we're 99% there in my opinion. Uh, let's look at the GFS to wrap things up for the day. This is two weeks, two weeks out. I just want to show you the pattern over the next 14 days or so. There's Oscar. Here's your high pressure cells. And just notice how everything moves. It's so fluid, very much like we see with water. When you wave your hand through the water or any kind of a solid motion goes through the water, well, there's no solid motions here in the atmosphere, no solid entities. Everything's fluid. Uh, but it's neat to see how it moves very much like, you know, eddies and swirls and whatever in a body of water. And if you take a paddle or your hand or whatever or a boat and you see how that moves through the water and it creates waves and, you know, counter waves and ebbs and flows, and the atmosphere does the same thing. It's quite neat to see. So there's Oscar coming up around the ridge here that's pretty stout over the central Atlantic. And you can track this up. And it does make its way on up into the North Sea, thank goodness. I, you know, there's still room that it could duck south a little bit and bring some of that energy towards the northern British Isles. And you see, too, over the next couple of weeks, no development in the Western Caribbean. So that's good because that's typically where we would see development this time of year. Late, late in the season, that's where we look. And we don't see any of these blobs right here, none of these clustered areas of bundled energy developing in the Western Caribbean, not on this run anyway. That doesn't mean it can't happen, because it certainly can, but we don't see it happening as of yet. All righty. Well, that's it. We covered a lot. Lower 48 weather looks pretty good for now. Maybe some storms coming up towards Halloween. I'll talk about that tomorrow. That's the other thing I do in my off-season discussions. I do focus more on lower 48 weather and especially big winter storms, things like that, severe weather outbreaks. Again, just keeping people aware, learning, and taking what we know about hurricanes and how we prepare for them and try to look for their development in the long range to the medium range. And in the short range, we can do the same thing with big ticket, high impact weather events, whether it be the big nor'easters that I'm most interested in or severe weather outbreaks and eventually in the springtime uh, tornado outbreaks which we really haven't had much of in the last few years I wonder if that will change interesting topics there we have a lot to do in the off season don't we and we still have a month to go in the on season alright I'm done have a great rest of your Monday it's great to be back after a weekend of spending time with the family doing some fun things uh, I hope you had a good weekend as well I am Mark Seth HurricaneTrack.com thank you so much for being on the other side listening to me. I hope you'll do it again tomorrow.